In 2016, every hour, the US dropped three bombs on average. Blown, Full blown. Full blown. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. This Ramadan, I'm raising money for the orphans and the poor in Gambia. I'm doing it with my trusted spot charity started by a friend. It's grassroots and allows donors to go and visit. I've been twice. And here you can see the boreholes we collected for last year, thanks to your generous donations. Link in the description. Well, that's a gen, yeah. <laughs> True Geordie, if you're from the UK, you know and you're probably familiar with this guy because he used to commentate on these YouTuber boxing events. Or maybe not, maybe you know him from football commentary. Regardless, this is the sort of crowd that he has, the young crowd, the kind of football fanatics as you might want to call them. To see these guys talking about fasting, and let's be honest, having a frank conversation, I could see it wasn't malicious and they were just bouncing off each other couched in banter. So bearing all that in mind, there were a few blunders that our friends made, so I thought why not just make a short, sweet, snappy video dealing with some of the things that maybe you guys were possibly unsure of or mistaken. You're, you're an atheist for a start. so Agnostic I'm... atheist, but yeah, sure. There's no such thing as that, mate, yeah? These are two diametrically opposed views. Atheism is certain that there's no God. Agnosticism is unsure if there's a God. I just don't think, to quote Chris Rock, yeah. that on Judgment Day, my diet's going to come into question. Like, <laughs> Firstly, mate, when it comes to God, it doesn't matter what you and I think. It doesn't matter how you're doing! Secondly, that's absolutely false. Our diet comes into question every single day. There are constant debates on what's good for us and what's not good for us. And legally, the government mandates that ingredients are displayed on food products. This could be because of allergy reasons, ethical reasons, and possibly others. To such a degree that even eggs here in Britain have to have, the class A ones have to have a code printed on the damn egg and that tells you where the egg is from. And also we wouldn't eat something that's stolen, that's got part of a human in there or even an animal that you have seen has suffered and then it's been put on your plate. I'm sure you wouldn't eat a cat or a dog either but there are some countries that allow that. I, I, I think the way I treat people and, and the purity of my heart, if said heaven did exist, is what it would be judged on. How do you measure purity of the heart? And what if somebody thinks doing a specific action is good, but according to you, it's bad? If everybody has this mentality, I'm just going to do what's good. Yeah, good is subjective. You can't run a society like that. I might think it's okay to have animals. Somebody might think I'm a butcher, mate. It does seem silly, but um, that's not me trying to offend anyone because I know it's something people are passionate about. We believe life is a test. And what's really silly is that we should somehow get to decide the questions on this test or expect a test and not to have any trials or tribulations. I think this is the silly bit. To me, as someone who's never fasted a day in his life, clearly, uh, it's a bit weird. In the 21st century, the liberal mindset of pleasure and pain being our masters has taken root. And this notion was something that was put forward by the father of utilitarianism, Jeremy Bentham in his book, The Principles of Morals and Legislation, where he said nature has placed mankind under the governance of two sovereign masters, pain and pleasure. The Quran says on this, have you seen our prophet, the one who has taken their own desires as their God? Will you then be a keeper over them? Or do you think that most of them listen or understand? They are only like cattle. No, more than that, they are astray from the right path. So in this very era, Islam is tutoring us on how to control our desires and not become subservient to them. In fact, Islam is giving us true freedom. And if we don't opt for this way, then we're going to be enslaved by drugs, materialism and promiscuity. And all three are being exploited by corporations and the capitalist society that we're living in. I do it for uh, health reasons, first of all. Like I genuinely started to feel the health benefits of fasting. Fasting in Islam is primarily done to gain taqwa. Yeah, which you can loosely translate as God consciousness or getting close to God. Not taking this into consideration when fasting is like playing football 
without the ball. Yeah, day every three. time I've done it, um, uh, I'll, by day three, you begin to feel a form of mental clarity. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Now you can understand why Pythagoras, Socrates and Confucius, these people that are known in Western circles, why they would also fast. Fasting for health, longevity, no, Nobel Prize winning research on cell aging. Japanese cell biologists won the Nobel Peace Prize for Medicine in 2016 for his research on how cells recycle and renew their content, a process called the autophagy, autophagy. Fasting activates autophagy, which helps slow down the aging process and has positive impact on cell renewal. His work was studied uh, in yeast. So not in the human body, but in yeast. So it worked on yeast? Yeah, it works on me. All I'm or saying is- not. It, it might be bullshit. This is true. He got a Nobel Prize for it. But it's also a basic principle of microbiology because yeast and humans share hundreds of genes. And because of this, it's easier and cheaper to experiment on yeast. Your Mrs. Family are oh, Muslim, full, yeah. All full believers. Full blown. I nearly said full blown. Full blown. <laughs> full blown, blown, full blown. Full blown. Hold your horses there, mate. Before you perpetuate the linking of Muslims and violence, let's go over some facts. Christianity as a religion has the most religiously motivated violence. In 2016, every hour, the US dropped three bombs on average. Blown, Full blown. Full blown. When it comes to Britain, there has not been a single year in the last hundred years that the UK has not been involved in a conflict. Blown, Full blown. Full blown. So let's not perpetuate this notion that Islam is linked with violence because it just shows that we are victim to media and propaganda. Hopefully these few points that I've mentioned have clarified a few things and if you guys want to know more, feel free to message me and we can arrange a discussion of sorts. Let's leave it there guys until next time. Assalamu alaikum.